guys, it's Char. Welcome back to my channel, Crafting Up a Storm. Today, I have another video as part of the five under five challenge, and I'll go into detail about that challenge and the wonderful hosts in my video. This month's theme is farmhouse. So I have five farmhouse inspired projects, all costing under $5 for the main materials. So they're inexpensive and easy to recreate. And hopefully it inspires you to make something for your home. Let's get crafting. For my first project, I am using a Dollar Tree Crafter Square chalkboard house. I'm giving the entire front of the house a couple of coats of Waverly chalk paint in plaster. I have this metal flower from the garden section at Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the wire tie um, that holds all of three flowers together and I'm going to separate those flowers. It took a little doing, but I removed the stake from the back flower. I just kept bending, trying not to bend or break the, the metal on the flower. It eventually came off. I'm painting all three flowers with a Waverly chalk paint in the plaster. Now what I want to use is some of the antique wax. The goal is to make this back flower um, a little bit darker distressed. The back flower will have the most distressing on it and then the middle flower will have a medium amount of distressing and the front flower will have a light amount. So I'm going to make um, the back flower the darkest, the middle flower the medium, and the top flower the lightest. Since I'm using the same paint and same wax on all of them, I just want to have a little bit of difference between the three. So I'm painting on some of the wax and I'm rubbing it off with a, um, a soft wipey and I just repeat this process until I have the shade that I'm looking for um, in between all three of them. I distressed the back one and then realized when I did the medium, the middle one, that the back one wasn't quite dark enough. So I just kept going until I got the um, shades that I liked. going in more heavy heavy handedly on the back flower and rubbing that in once I have my flowers the shades that I like I want to take some of the floral wire it's green so I would like to have a more brown colored wire um, and I just paint it with some brown acrylic paint it also makes it look a little rusted. I add a dab of hot glue to the back of the front flower, the smallest flower, and I add my wire down. That hot glue will hold that wire in place. Now I just wrap the wire around the front middle of the flower. I'm not going in any special pattern or trying to make sure, I just am trying to make sure I get each petal in between each petal, but I don't want um, symmetric. I'm trying to kind of go for a, a messy crisscross.
it just keep wrapping with the wire until I have it covered as much as I'd like to have it covered. And then I clip it and hot glue the, uh, the piece down. Once I have it, I kind of press down on it to get all those wires flattened a little bit. Now I'm adding a tumbling tower block to the back of the largest flower. I want it to have an, a level surface and stand off the back house just a little bit. So I glued down a tumbling tower block. and positioned my flower and that way I can glue my flower to the house by gluing on the block. I want to do something similar for the second flower, the middle flower, to have something flat to glue down to but I don't want it to stand out too much. So I'm gonna use this, uh, just a piece of a craft stick. I'll glue that down and then I can glue my middle flower to that. As I'm gluing down my middle flower, I make sure that I'm not lining those petals up. I'm offsetting them just slightly. That top flower has the metal wire on it so it stands up just a little bit already so I don't need to add anything to this one. I'm just going to um, hot glue down that wire and I'm going to offset those petals again. In order to have my little house stand up, I'm going to glue a tumbling tower block to the back. And I glue it up just a slight amount so that the house can lean back a little bit and it won't stand straight up. And there's my first project. Very simple, very easy. Let me know what you guys think. For this project, I picked up three of the candlestick holders at Dollar Tree and I'm going to use liquid nails and hot glue and glue one candlestick holder on top of another. I made sure to use a lot of liquid nails and even go around the outside once I was done. I have a cat food can, and for any can that I use in a project, I go around and make sure there's no sharp edges. I'm gonna glue this can to the top of the last candlestick. And then I'm gonna paint the can and the candlestick and all in Waverly chalk paint black. I'm gonna do that for both. For the larger double candlestick, I used a chicken uh, can just because it's a little bit bigger and it fits the bottom of the candlestick better. So this one I'll glue to the bottom of the double candlestick. Everything was coated in black chalk paint. Now I'm using some Waverly chalk paint ivory and I'm getting some out and to this I'm going to add a lot of baking soda. I almost want to make a paste. So I'm just going to mix in. I don't have a measurement. I just keep mixing until I get the consistency that I would like. And you can see it's very good and thick and I just dollop it all over the entire outside of those candlesticks and can. And it adds a lot of texture and coverage and I just keep going until I have a good coat. Once that's dry, I go in with some black chalk paint 
and I add my distressing just because it's easier than trying to file some of it away and get back down to that black. Um, I just go around the edges and rims and kind of add a little bit of paint to make it look chipped and antiqued. I do that with both candlesticks. Once it's done, I'm going to go around the outside with a very good, healthy coating of Mod Podge um, and get these coated down. I want them protected. And that's it for these easy candlestick holders. The five under five challenge is an open playlist that comes out on the fifth of each month. And it is um, hosted by Missy from Crafty Cove DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. Each month they choose a guest host. This month it's La Parsha from Creating It Myself. These are wonderful DIYers. Please go check out their videos and their channel and enjoy this playlist. It is full of talented, talented folks, and you will be sure to get plenty of everyday farmhouse ideas. Enjoy. For this project, I'm using the set of salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna use one and I'm going to paint the shaker with Waverly chalk paint in black. I give it a couple of good coats just to make sure it's good and covered. I used a arch from Dollar Tree. This arch comes in two pieces and I used the front thicker piece for a different project. I'm gonna just use the back panel and I'm also gonna paint that with the chalk paint. Now I'm using Waverly chalk paint in moss and I'm going to go over the top of the shaker with this. Now I'm going to distress it a little bit and see if I can't get some of that black paint to come through um, in the corners and so forth. I try not to um, sand it too much because I don't want it to go down to the glass again. Now I'm also going to use some of my ivory paint and some baking soda for this. I'm going to use that same technique, make a paste and do a thick coating of that um, kind of like stucco onto my arch. I pounce it on and give it a nice um, rough textured coat. I go back over the top of it with even more and really just pounce it on to get that texture. Now I'm going to rub off the excess from the edges and distress it a little bit to add some wear and tear to it. I wanna add some twine to the top of my salt and pepper shaker to cover the top up. and I burn off the um, fringe. I decided to go down a little bit further, so I added some extra twine down um, a ways on the bottle of my shaker. Now I want this shaker to sit up a little bit onto the arch. I don't want it to be at the bottom, that way I can hang it. And so I'm going to take some twine and wrap it around and tie it to the back and then put a lot of glue along the back side of this arch to hold the shaker in place. 
I added a craft stick along the back to give it some stability and some tumbling tower blocks to make a stand to stand it up. This way I can stand it up or I can hang it either way. Because this was a little front heavy since the salt and pepper shaker was a little um, weighted down, I did cut down a tumbling tower block. I used my miter shears. I just had to keep pushing on them because it wouldn't come off. Usually I flip it over and cut it from each side. But I used this small block as a brace up underneath my salt and pepper shaker. I glued it to the bottom and then um, painted over it so it blended in. And I also added some texture to it so it blended in. This helped hold it up. I used this Ingrio bush from Dollar Tree. I found them there, I love them. I thought they were super cute um, in the two different colors and I added them to my salt and pepper shaker and this project is complete. Let me know what you think of this one. This has got to be my easiest project yet. I picked up a set of wooden blocks from Dollar Tree and a set of transfers. This is a farmhouse inspired set of rub on transfers. I just took my blocks and I used the transfers to rub onto the blocks. I kind of wanted them to fit into the front so I did cut the transfers apart a little bit and then I kind of blended them um, what leaves maybe would go together so I cut a transfer down a little bit cut away the pieces that I wanted to use and then I rubbed that onto the block and these transfers are very easy um, I just used a this is um, the scoring tool from my scoring board. However, you can use just a craft stick or anything that helps you rub this transfer off. And you can see that the transfer kind of goes frosty. Once it's all completely down, it's no longer this dark black. Um, so you know once it's completely down and I just kept rubbing until I got that frosty color all over. Now I'm going to take another piece and add it to this leaf to have a just a, a little different design. Kind of combine them in some way. And I added that one down and rubbed that until it was transferred. And I did this with all three blocks. Very easy. I didn't paint the blocks first. I didn't do anything. I left them in the raw wood. So I did the same thing with the second block, added a little piece of the transfer. And I really wasn't worried about the design, just wanted to, to add two of them together to make it a little more interesting. This one I just used a small piece. And on the last block, I used the larger open leaf and added a little extra to it. Now I'm going to take all three of my blocks and I'm going to um, stack them up and glue them together. I wanted to offset them a little bit to give them a little bit of character. 
not make them too straight. So I offset them just a tiny bit. You can, you can um, glue them straight. You can do whatever you'd like. You don't have to glue them. You can leave them open and loose. Now I'm gonna take some uh, Dollar Tree gingham checkered ribbon and just wrap it around the outside of my blocks. Because they're a little offset, I do put glue a couple of different places um, to help that ribbon stay kind of tight next to the block. I will go back in and add some glue onto the side to wrap that closely to the side of my blocks. I add a bow onto the top just by making a very simple shoelace style bow. And this project is done. It's so simple and so easy. Um, I just like the way it turned out. Um, it was just the price of a little bit of ribbon and those blocks. I still have plenty of the transfers left for another project. For my last project, I picked up this picket fence hanger from Dollar Tree and removed the staples and the jute hanger off the back. I'm gonna use a little of this acrylic paint. It's an outdoor paint, but it's just the brown that I wanted to use, just a regular medium brown. I don't have to have outdoor paint on it, but it's, it's just an acrylic paint, so it worked fine. I'm going to paint the entire fence with this brown to give it a darker undertone. I go in in between the slats and in the corners and on the edge so that everything is covered. I'm also using a small crate from Dollar Tree and I painted it um, on three of the sides and the bottom the bottom is going to be the top. I didn't paint the back side because I'm going to glue my picket fence to the back and I wanted to be able to glue onto wood. I also didn't paint the entire um, bottom of my picket fence and left that so that I had some wood as well. I'm painting some floral wire like I did in the first project and I'm just using the brown to make it rusty. Now I'm going to go in and add some ivory chalk paint to the top to, um, to coat. I'm not wanting to do a solid coverage. I do want some of that brown to kind of show through. Um, but I'm covering it pretty much up with the ivory paint. And then I'll go back and sand some off and distress it to have that undercoat show through. I'm trying not to get it in the grooves between the crate so that that dark shows up in the grooves. I do the same thing to the picket fence. And again, not needing a solid coverage, but going over most of it. Now I'm gonna sand away a lot of that ivory paint as much as I can, especially around the edges and the tips of the fence. I also take a file and kind of go around the edges and in between so I can get some of that paint off. Distressing the crate as well. especially the corners and the edges. I do end up going in with some Waverly Wax 
just because I really want to get some good antiquing distressed look to it. I pay extra attention to the creases and the corners and the edges and add extra wax to those. I kind of like the way the wax um, darkened that ivory a little bit too. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. So I put my picket fence on there and kind of drew some lines and then I knew where my glue needed to be and I glued down the fence to the back and held it in place with some clips. Once that was done, I went in with my wire and I just crisscrossed it um, across the back, going in between the slats, just making sure I made an X across the back. Just to add a little detail to the back of our fence. And there's our bench. I wanted it a little darker in the corner, so I did go back in with some of that um, wax and really darken up the edges and the back to make it look like a worn bench. Wherever, you know, somebody sat on it and um, weared the um, color down. Then I popped some little decorative um, cubes on the bottom and it's done. I painted those in with the wax as well. What do you think? Here are all of today's projects together. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with these farmhouse inspired projects. Let me know which one's your I love bringing you these projects each month. And if you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you as part of the crafty family. Have a great day and keep crafting.